Chris's dad loves the Lord, and he's a wonderful testimony. And I would have never blamed him for the fishing thing, but uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, the reason I started reading my Bible and praying uh, every day was the fact I was going to talk to my dad, and I see him on his knees praying. Man. Or downstairs huh. reading his Bible, and I thought, if this is so important for him to do it, then it's important for me to do it. Amen. That's wonderful. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad for my dad because um, he took us to church till I was five years old. And I'm glad that he picked up my mom because she's the one who did it the rest of the time. And I'm thankful for my grandfather, who was my mom's dad. I always saw him on his knees, too. And when they'd come to visit, <laughs> he was a big man like Nick. And it was funny because my mom always put my grandpa and grandma in our room to sleep. My sister's in my room. We slept on little cots right next to them. And every night, my grandpa would pray, and he would pray so long. And at dinner time, he'd pray long, too. <laughs> but he'd pray and pray and pray. And um, when I was just a little thing, I remember he was praying, and I got the idea of climbing up on his back. <laughs> and I knelt praying on his back while he was praying. And he always let me do that. And But he was a very godly man, too. And I'm thankful for my granddads and my dad. Amen. And for this path. Charity? I'm so thankful for my dad because he's just always been such a godly influence to me. He's he's always read his Bible to us, taught us verses, reciting the Sermon on the Mount to us every night, very dramatically. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I can talk to him about everything. He's just always been such an encouragement to me. Amen. Don? I'm thankful that my father brought us to church every service to a godly church. Amen. Apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, I will that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And one of the characteristics of manhood is the ability to show how to go to God constantly. And the godly man's a man that goes constantly. Got right, be- right behind you at first, J- uh, J- uh, Cassie. I'm sorry. <laughs> was like a Christian dad to me. Uh, I rented an apartment, second floor of his house, but uh, I can remember uh, his prayers at night were long and effective, and that's what he was known for. And he did read the Bible every day with his dog in his lap, and uh, had a strong influence on, on me spiritually. His name was Harold. Amen. And it's interesting, isn't it, that the theme that comes out is this man read the Bible, this man prayed. Isn't it amazing that that makes a difference? Not amazing, but that's the thing that stands out to you about your parents is that they love the Lord. When I was four years old, I remember my dad taking me to preaching conferences, and you know he was he was been saved just a couple years before I was born. And those things I just remember like nothing else. So some of the all the things we've done together, those are some of the things that I remember like nothing else. Sammy. My dad always spent time with me, regardless of what our situation was with finances or anything else. And he made me take responsibility for my actions. Amen. It's wonderful. Yes, ma'am. I realize a lot of the way that I see God and viewed him was because of my dad and the relationship that I was able to have even as a young child with God was because of the kind of relationship my dad gave with me. I always knew that he loved me. I always knew that he was there and he would guide and he would direct and he'd take care of me. So when I accepted the Lord and he said he was my father, I understood that. And I just thank God for a dad that was like him. Amen. Tony? 
Yeah, my father is here, and uh, like you said, if we could say everything that we wanted to, it would take all day. So I just want to say that um, my dad taught me a lot about, well, first thing that comes to mind is his work ethic. He's probably the hardest working guy that I know. And uh, all growing up, he did um, provoke questions in my mind about the meaning of life and the purpose as to Know what we're supposed to be doing here, and and today I have I don't really have those questions anymore. That's been settled, and so as you said, it's uh, I am the person that I am largely due to who my father is. And, uh, he's, <laughs> don't blame me. They <laughs> <laughs> say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Right? So um, my dad was stern and and. Uh, he had high expectations, and uh, but he does also have a lot of compassion. And uh, I did realize that God doesn't make mistakes, so he did give me the perfect father for me, and I thank God for that, and I want to thank my dad. Um, I have some good memories with him, and I've seen him change throughout the years, which um, just taught me a lot, because if he can change, anybody can change. <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> and when I was going through hard times in, in life that I brought upon myself, he, uh, he was there for me. Amen. And um, it was a real encouragement to know that I have a dad that loves me. And I just want to thank God and thank my dad. And I want to say, love you, dad. I'm glad you're here today. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yes, sir, Brother Chuck. Uh, I'd like to thank the Lord for a dad that uh, always uh, showed me by his life what was right and uh, showed me how important it was to be honest and to be open with people. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Charlie? Yeah, I just want to praise the Lord that, uh, well, I'm not really sure what to say. <laughs> this, I get, really, I guess just, I'm thankful that my dad sacrificed the way he did for us growing up and um, he made it a point to try and give us uh, some sense of direction and some uh, I guess uh, atmosphere in our home uh, to where you needed to learn about life and you needed to you know go after things of value uh, things of substance is what I mean. Not just uh, you know, don't don't pursue money or don't pursue uh, vanity and stuff, but you know, pursue things of substance, pursue things of value. You know, people and relationships and things of that nature uh, were important to him. And even though um, he kind of thought that coming to this country as opposed to where you know where he came from. Uh, is a lot better off. Um, you know, he, he went Christian, but uh, he did. He did at least instill that into us, saying that you know, there's there's more to life than just than, than, than what you see. You know, that was <laughs> that was very instrumental uh, in in uh, me getting saved later on. Amen. You know that I think that if we're honest about it, and you think about it. I don't think any of us would have a relationship with the Lord if it were not for the Father God gave us. And we may have a Father that pointed us to Christ. We may have a Father that just raised us in a way that we would turn to Christ. But uh, we know God our Heavenly Father because of our fathers. And we live in a society that diminishes the importance of the family, a father and a mother. The, point, the part that they diminish more than anything else is the role of the father. Our society teaches, not even really covertly, but openly, that you don't need a dad. And we talk about empowering women to take over the function of what a man is. And we're a mess. Our society is a mess because of the lack of men who see that their role as men is important in the family. And men, if you could get anything out of 